All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's two minutes after seven, and we'll get started with our talk tonight, and it's going to be on ARRL radiograms. The reason that we picked it for tonight is because when field day comes up, we are going to be sending a number of radiograms. Where's our radiogram sender? Brendan. Brendan is in charge of sending a whole bunch of radiograms, and we just hope that they get there to the end. What we're going to talk about tonight is the standardized ARRL radiogram form. Yes. It doesn't matter if they get there. We just have to prove yeah. that we set them to get the point. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And that, that'll probably happen. So what we're going to be talking about is the standard form. Now, ARRL, American Radio Relay League, this goes back to why the AR, one of the reasons why the ARRL was started. Because that's the way that we used to communicate around 1900 and so, turn, well, a little bit after that, turn of the century, we would actually write a telegram and it would go from here to Richmond and then from Richmond it would go up to Columbus, Ohio, and from Columbus it would go over to Las Vegas or something and it would finally work its way across the country. Would they be generally crossband? Pardon me? Would they generally be crossband? So. It doesn't make it, no, you just send a bunch of uh, radiograms to a station and then they're collected and then it goes from this uh, this is part of the national traffic system the NTS which I'm not prepared to talk about tonight but it'll go to this pile in the Midwest and then it goes farther west and they send all these messages and then finally it gets distributed out to the people that are uh, supposed to receive them so uh, we're going to talk about how to fill this out because there is one standard form on filling it out and if everybody follows that standard form, everything works out. If you don't follow the standard form, it doesn't work out so well. So, tonight, we are presenting, let's see if I can get this, there it goes. Oh, maybe I can hit it again. There we go. Oh, listen, listen. Ron, did you catch that? Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> okay, preparing the ARRL radiogram. This is really acting very really slow. Well, we had to get that part in. All right, let's move on here. Now, a blank form, which I have some blank forms up here, and I'm going to make them available to you if, when we're finished here, if you want to fill out the blank form to send a radiogram to a, a long lost nephew or cousin or to your neighbor, or as I did to uh, Sheila, who lives across the street from my vet, I sent her an email and then she delivered it across the street to the vet. So we actually have real life experience in using this. Three reasons to fill out the form. Anybody got an idea? Well, you got no, uh, you know, define who it's going to eventually. Well, you got to, you can, you you'd fill it out if you were going to originate the message. Yeah. You would fill it out if you were going to receive it and then pass it on. So it would actually you would record it and then pass it on. And the last mm -hmm. reason is if you were the last person in line and it came to you and you were going to deliver it to whoever the recipient is. These used to be delivered by phone and uh, <coughs> with just a, uh, a local phone call but now the whole thing has changed. But we still use it because we still need to keep practice in it. When you're using characters, when you're writing on this form, Everything is uppercase. There are no upper and lowercase. Everything is in uppercase. You use you can use numbers. Only use the slash in the address. Nothing more. No more slash. And the interesting part is that you spell out all the punctuation, and the punctuation counts as a word. So you have a, a question mark or an exclamation point or a dash or a colon or a, except for one punctuation and that is the period and that is an X. Six parts to the uh, radiogram and 
they're all six of them, and you fill them out one at a time. The uh, preamble, that talks about the station that is collecting the information when you start it out. This is the information that identifies the station that is originating the message and the information relative to that, like date and time and so on. And the precedence, we'll get into that. Station of origin, of course, that would probably most likely be your station, or in the case of field day, it's going to be a K4HTA, which will be the station of origin, place of origin, time file, and date. Now, there are some rules in filling that out, and we'll see what those are. Numbers, any number you want, and generally you would keep a chronological, or not chronological, a numerical log, but you would not have any leading zero. So you wouldn't say, this is 0052, this is message number 52. And if you go over into the thousands, then you would use 252 or whatever, to the number thousand. So no leading zeros, but just whatever numbering system that you like. The precedence, some of the messages are more important. Oh, I guess I just had to put the number. Hold on a second. Precedence. There are abbreviations for that, such as priority, welfare, and routine, except for emergency. And if it is an emergency message, you spell out the word emergency. And when you send it, let's say you're sending it with CW, you spell out E-M-E-R-G-E-N-C-Y, emergency, not with just an E. So that puts a little more emphasis on the precedence. And the HX part. Okay, let's see. We got to put this in. Okay, this is going to be a routine message that we're taking today. The next part, the HX code. You don't have to put it in, but it tells the person on the receiving end of the line what to do when you get this message. And you can see right up there. You can collect for the phone call, or you can deliver it and send the information back to the originating station. It tells the last guy in line what to do with this message when he gets it. So in this particular case, it's going to be deliver the station reports the date and time of delivery. So all of this information in the, on the preamble is going to go with every message until it finally is delivered. Only one third the time? Yes. Yeah, only one vote. It either, it's either going to report back or you're going to make a phone call. Station of origin, okay. That would be, uh, oh, that would be K6PFA. And the next thing is the check. Very important. This is the number of words that are in the message. And this is one of the most important parts of it. So that when the person at the, each one of these stages down the line as this message is passed, he gets in there and he counts and he makes sure that there is not a word missing so that this message is going to be exact as when it was started. So they count all the words and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute here. In this particular case, there is a one of these uh, ARL number messages and that's in this book that you were looking at that was passed around, that says that the ARL says that there will be a numbered message in there and so that that changes, the, it doesn't change the count, it makes the count the same, but it means that, that you're looking for a number that's going to be in the message. And then uh, the 23 is the number of words and punctuation that is composed up the message itself. So when it, just remember the ARL, if it didn't have, if it didn't have this coded, numbered coded message in there, it would not have the ARL, it would just have a number for the number of words that shows up. Place of origin, okay, well this is not too complicated. Uh, time filed, uh, they preferred Zulu so that everybody knows what time it was filed. And the date is three letters and two numbers. You don't put the year in there. And it's, you see the three-letter abbreviation down at the bottom. 
that is the preamble that goes with the message all the way through, as does everything else, but that's the administrative part of this. Okay, we're going to look, take a look at putting in the uh, name and address. Uh, that looks pretty good, it has an email address in there. And you'll see when we send it, you see the at sign showing up there. We're actually going to spell out at sign. So it'll say dad at at sign, excuse me, dad at sign for dad.com. Pardon me? <laughs> okay. Uh, off note, this can go on in there, deliver it on weekends. So this is just an administrative note to the person at the end of the line that uh, delivered, excuse me, delivered on weekdays. Text the message. All right. Notice ARL 53. Then it comes through $126 X-ray. That's the period. So anybody have the book? Take a look in the book and see what ARL 53 is, if you can. Oh, okay. I'll buy the light. I can buy All right, that's all right. 53 is received your blank. It's appreciated. Many thanks. Okay. 53 means received your whatever. Uh, many thanks. So you can see that saying ARL 53 is a lot faster than uh, saying all those other words that are there. All right. X for the period. Unless it was mentioned 50. Three Pardon one. me? Yeah, unless it was mentioned 50. And it was three, three one hundred twenty, thirty one hundred twenty dollars. <laughs> you lost me, John. Yeah, it depends on where your period is, oh, okay. where the end of the number. Is. Well, okay, we're going to say it's right there. That that's where where commas would be nice. Oh, you can spell out commas, but it doesn't. All punctuation marks are spelled out, so you can say, well, the way that it's written. It is written 126, so there are no commas in there. Unless we were to say 100, comma, or whatever. Or it was $3,100. It would, he would write it, and then he would spell out all of the punctuation. Everything's spelled out except for the X, which is the period. Okay, and we covered this. 26 of those in that book are for emergency type situations, and 22 are just routine like a Merry Christmas and so on. One of the emergency ones says, uh, we are all fine, or mom and dad are fine. There's blanks in there that you fill out. Okay, in this particular case, you can see in the blue is the number that we have in there that's filling in the blank space. Received your $126, as much appreciated many things. Now, it doesn't have to be money. It can be received your in the blue, your brother's old red chainsaw. Much appreciated, many thanks. Received your old red Porsche with a radar detector. Many thanks. So whatever you put in there, it, you pick the one out that it fits. Okay, what else we got here? So the more of the message is being written down by the receiving station. Oh, this sounds good. Okay, looks like somebody's bringing a new girlfriend home Saturday. X-ray for the period. And, uh, here we go. Oh, okay, loving son. Well, this might change when he comes home. <laughs> now you notice there is no concluding X. Just the last word is the concluding, is the end of the message, so that it does not end with an X. That's something that's different. No final R. Now, we're going to go up here and we're going to count words so that we can then put it up in the check. So if you counted each line, there has five words on it. And if you can count on down there, you'll see that there are 23 words. The X is counted as a word. And so that's why you see up at the top, where you see an ARL 23, that means that there are 23 words in there and that there is an ARL numbered message. And that's the ARL 53. And a total of 23 characters. 
Okay, the bottom part now is the record keeping part so that you can go back and there is a paper trail. And this does not, this does not go ahead. This stays with the station. And, excuse me, it says it was received from uh, AA4ABC on December 17th. And then it's sent out to uh, N5XYZ on October 17th, a couple of hours later. That's not sent ahead as part of the radiogram. That is just the administrative record keeping that takes place in the station when the doc when the uh, radiogram is copied down and then when it is sent out. So it's just a, an intermittent administrative. Now. Now that we've looked at all of that, this is the way on CW that it would be sent. Uh, if you were using sideband or voice, of course these words would be spoken. And you notice the reason that it's so nice in CW is when you're getting it, you're copying it down and you're actually making a record of it, but you don't have to, uh, there are no punctuations in because of the way that the preamble and the text is set out set out on the form when you go from a state like for instance we see the uh, the first line on the far right it says Vienna Virginia the next thing is a number you know that the number there is in fact the time because the time in the preamble follows right after the uh, station or the location of the originating station October 17th comes right after the time what comes after the time the address. And so everything that you see on there has a place in the radiogram and you don't need any slashes, you don't need double spaces, it's just the fact that it follows in the next position on the radiogram itself. Okay, here's a cue signal we probably have never used. I used it once when I sent a message to Sheila, I've never used it since. QSG, shall I send a message? And comes back, yes, you have QSG without the question mark. So the first one, the QSG question mark, makes the statement a query. Without the question mark, it's a statement. So the statement is QSG, yes, send it to me. And then that's the message that's being sent afterwards. It just, you see the two stations are identifying themselves, the first three words up there. Now the first item on the preamble was the number. So you start off the message with NR, the person receiving it knows this is the start of the preamble and this is everything that I've got to be recording. Number 52 follows right there. What's the next thing? It's going to be the precedence. In this particular case it's a routine precedence. What's the next thing that shows up? Is how to handle the message when it once gets to the receiving the final station, who started it out, and so on. And you can see everything that's in there. There are no slashes or dashes or commas unless it happens to be part of the text itself. Goes right on through down to the end. So let's take a look at the uh, ProSign AA. Now this is not sent as a dit da, dit da, because that would be AA. It's sent as a pro sign, da 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 da. As one single character, it just happens to be made up of two A's in a row. That's why you see an underscore on the text there. That means it is sent as a pro sign. So after the address, after the, the person's name who's going to receive this, you send a da 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 da. That means the next thing up is going to be a street address. And then let's just move on over. There's the, uh, that starts the street address, that ends the street address. So with this pro sign, da 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 da, you know what's coming up next. Oh yeah, notice that the east is spelled out because we don't put, the only, the only time that you'd use an, an E is when, if you're talking about uh, Northeast Vienna, then you would use an NE Vienna. But that would show up after the double A, so you know that the NE was part of the town and not part of the address. Okay, spelled out, it's recovered now. 
Note the at sign. Where is the at sign? Oh, there it is. Uh, that's the email address, dad, at sign, or dad.com, spelled out for you. Pro sign BT, this starts the text of the message. So everything between the two BTs goes into the word count. So we send the BT, now we start counting words. There'll be another one at the end, that's when we stop counting the words. And then that's the sequence as it goes out over the air. Now, when it's once received, the uh, receiving station counts it so that the word check is right. And then this is the information at the receiving station. And this is filled out when it's going to be delivered to someone. That guy types pretty fast. Okay, now, when you deliver it to someone, ARL 53 doesn't mean anything to most people. So when you copy down AR 53, you go to your operating manual, you look up what it is, and then you put it in and you spell it out in plain text so that the, the person receiving it understands what's going on. And that would be what the radiogram looks like when it is delivered to the person. So you fill it out, you either type it out or you put it in block letters, make it readable, and this is what the person on the other end receives when we want to use this particular radiogram format. Covering a lot of information tonight, now is your chance to ask me a question. John, what was your question? Oh, uh, there, it wasn't very ambiguous the way you presented it, but there is a possibility of the uh, ARRL code being one, one character, right? one, one number, one digit. Yeah. Is there one digit in the book? Yep, one character. So there okay, is it zero one or is it just a digit just one? one? Just a digit one. Okay, so. But, but one, three, five, seven dollars. So could that be message one, three, five, seven dollars, or could it be? Uh, no, because one three. The, the, the digits five, that would dollars. follow the digits that would follow the A R L abbreviation would number the particular text that's in the book. If it, it wouldn't be number one three five, one space three space five space, it would be number one two be number 12. Isn't that how it's written out in there? Uh, yeah, it would be 12. But I, I, you could construct an ambiguous message. I don't know why you would want to. You yeah, probably have to want to, but you probably have to work hard to construct well, if, an ambiguous If you do have to work hard to do it, fine. But if you, if you could do it accidentally, then you need to be aware of the possibility and try to guess it. I would say... <laughs> AR, I don't know, ARL 53,000. It could be ARL 53,000 or ARL 53,000. So the only thing with that is if, if, if the operator that's receiving the message and passing the message yeah. doesn't know what they're doing, is the only way that that could happen, right? So no, you're just no, you can construct the message passing it literally. literally. Right, but ARL followed by a number or a group of numbers, ARL 52, is going to be a trigger for me to go look up what 52 Unless it's actually 50 with two being the first word. But, but I would figure that out by looking at that. Oh, you, and, you might figure it out. I would say after 50 years, actually after 100 years, right? Uh, I don't think it's been a problem. Plus you can discuss it after Un passing the message. Right? Unless, unless we had John at one end saying, can I make this ambiguous? Can I send him $3,000 instead of message three? <laughs> that might be the way that would be going Okay, you've all had a chance to look at the book. Uh, the book will be up here. You can take a look at it on your way out the door. I have some blank radiograms. If you would like to fill out a blank radiogram, see if you remember everything that we talked about tonight, fill it out, hand it to me in the regular meeting hall. I'll take a look at it and grade it for you. This is, we don't give away anything free. you got to have an exam at the end of it. Otherwise, there's no learning taking place. So. Here it is, it'll be up in the front. 
And are there any other questions? Oh, Brandon, you're getting ready to clap. Go ahead. I have a comment. Yes. If you want to hear traffic being passed, and sometimes you'll hear traffic being passed on the Blue Monster Theater. Yes. Every night at 7.30 p.m., seven nights a week, there's the National Traffic System traffic net. There's not a lot of traffic passed, but every now and then there's traffic passed. Or put your headphones on and listen on field day. There's going to be thousands of Oh, yes. Very good. Phone call and send a message and listen to it. Yeah, thank you. That, that would be give you some experience in seeing how this works. And the fact that it doesn't have any paragraphs or anything in it, that it just continues on in its location within the message and what comes before each one of the elements and what follows tells you where it is. Yes, Keith. Well, why, is that, uh, why are the um, punctuation marks spelled out instead of just using the Morse for the, for the punctuation marks? Why? Because they charge to put the nickel word. Yeah, nickel word. <laughs> it makes it more clear, I would say. Uh, if you were to look at a at a document that was just a little dot there, uh, it it adds clarity and it removes ambiguity. And it's been around for over a hundred years. So I think uh, I agree with John that it uh, uh, adds ambiguity because uh, some some words are uh, okay. Here's what your task is. Write me an ambiguous message. Also, can you spell out apostrophe? <laughs> yes. Okay, are there any other questions?